Welcome back to the channel. So I decided I was going to do a quick table update. I hadn't done one in a while. And uh figure I'd show you guys what progress I made. Now, I know you are guys looking at this jar that is in front of you right now. And it is not a jar of pickles. <laughs> Although I do have a jar of pickles in the refrigerator. I will tell you what that is later. But in the meantime, let's get to the miniatures. Okay, so the first thing we got up is just something I had on my hobby table right in my face. So I figured I might as well, uh, might as well start with it. Uh, this is a Japanese, I think they're called support teams. This is a Warlord Games kit. And I am just finishing them up. I've got to go back and do some highlights. But you kind of get this flamethrower guy. You get this uh, guy who's kind of squatting with a rifle. Not exactly sure if he's meant to be a spotter. Or if he's just simply squatting with his rifle. This guy obviously is looking as if he's he's spotting for somebody. Probably for the sniper. Although he has no binoculars or anything and then last but not least we get our sniper so I kind of like the way he came out I like that he has no helmet on and he's kind of got that uh you know he's kind of got that that uh forgot what they call those but those uh a kind of bandana on his head or scarf on his head or whatever but uh no, I just kind of like that. So, I actually finished those up last night. Actually, I'm not quite finished, but I was working on those last night. All right, and this is a... I think I showed you guys this before. This is an Etsy figure that I didn't get from Etsy. I got from Macari, but I call it Etsy because it's 3D printed. So, it's like I think he's called a Squire or Boy Squire. So, that's him with the sword... This is him with his pack and his gear. Although maybe that's his knight's gear, but I think it's his gear because they, they have a version of him where he actually has the helmet on, which I'm thinking of getting. But I actually really like the way he came out. I kind of like him. I did him with the red hair to kind of give him some spunk, to make him look spunky. Next up, we have our Dracula's America... Uh, I think they're called the Skinwalker Posse. They have another one that is called the Planeswalkers, which I'm actually probably going to order either in the morning or later on tonight. Uh, I got these on eBay. I really like these. I like the way they came out. I pretty much painted them like they were uh, on the box cover. Uh I think every now and then I might have varied a few colors here or there. But I can always paint faster if I just go by somebody else's color scheme. And I'm not stopping trying to figure out what color to paint something. And then messing up and repainting it. But like I said, I really like the way these guys came out. I am definitely looking forward to using them in some games of A Good Day to Die. And it's like I said when I, when I reviewed the system... I really wish they had some uh, lists for either gangs or factions and things. Maybe even with some special abilities for them. Although, like I said, they do they do consider Native Americans kind of to be warriors. Although I'm not sure if all of them would be classified as warriors. Because that would be a lot, of, uh, a lot of wounds to keep track of. But I actually really like the way these came out. So, I, don't know, I figured you'd probably make one... One of these in A Good Day to Die would probably be your uh, your killer. Then you'd maybe make another one a warrior or a killer. And then the rest of these would be soldiers, more or less. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using them. In fact, I am looking forward to getting these here. And these, like I said, are the, uh, the Planeswalker one. So they have... Kind of more traditional Native American clothing on for that period, as opposed to, uh, you know, these guys that are kind of wearing more of the, uh, which would be kind of the more modern American dress with the slacks and vests and things like that. 
So I'm definitely looking forward to getting these. Matter of fact, you could probably do some games where they're they're versus each other. Uh, although it looks like the uh, it looks like the uh, Skinwalker are better armed and equipped than the Planeswalkers. Because you can see a couple of these. This guy has no weapon here. He's called the Arcanist, which I don't know. I guess you could use him as an elder or a chief. He's a war chief. Pretty much neither one of them are armed, but you could assume they have a knife or axe. Pistol. Pistol. Bow. Two rifles and two pistols. So, but yeah, I'm actually looking forward to picking those up too. These are my Drug War Z, uh, Mexican Polizai or Mexican Army. I don't remember which one it was. They might have been the Army. But uh, I also like the way these came out. So this is kind of one of their officers or leaders. Uh, this guy has an automatic weapon. He has an automatic weapon. I did not give these a wash. Normally I, I put the Agrax Earthshade on them. I haven't done that with them yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. I just kind of liked them the way they were. So I didn't really, I didn't really want to do the wash on them yet. I want to get some more of these as well. I think they have a couple of different packs that I didn't get. I know one is some commanders, which I don't really know if I need because I like this guy as a commander. Uh, but I'd probably like to have at least 12 of these for my Spectre Operations games. So and I think you get three in a pack for like $11 if you do the, the late pledge. Which really, if you late pledge, they will they will mail it to you like within a week. They, they fulfill it almost immediately. Uh, as far as I know. These are the last of my Journey to the Overland uh, town and castle markers, 3D town and castle markers. So, see if I can remember these by heart, all of them. This is the old Overland. This you would actually not use unless you had the expansion called the Unknown Islands expansion. This is, or basically these are the same, but this is called the Lost Man's Camp which is kind of a location in the game where you would go to recruit troops. You know, that they, they kind of hang out at this camp and wait to be recruited. This is King's Harbor. Not quite finished with this. This is the last one I did, so I haven't decided if I'm going to go back over this with the wash or not. Uh, I think I put one on there. But that's basically King's Harbor. This is one of what they call the Bane Forts which is where the, the king's knights or vassals reside in these castles throughout the overland. This is a location called the Blue Bridge. This is also from another expansion. It's called the Cannibals Village. Now, this one is actually kind of out of scale compared to the other ones, but uh, I think I added these on real late when I had the guy do them. I didn't really have a I didn't really have a plan, a city plan. I just gave them a building description. Same thing with this. This is for an expansion called the Town of Misery. So again, this would really be out of scale, but it's just representative representative. This is a place called the Oracle of Light. This is a town called Future Town. Just kind of a very advanced town in the overland and the last one is actually it's the favorite one I've painted so far is Zafton just like a big seafaring town uh, I forgot the name of there there's a there's a town in the world of Conan that I modeled that off of uh, is it is it Vin 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 Haya or Vin Vindaya I think it starts with a V if I remember correctly but uh, that's kind of where I got the idea for Zafton is this big seafaring port and last but not least, we have finished our uh, American Airborne. These miniatures are from Gaddis Gaming. Uh, this is the American Airborne. I think I have one more called American Airborne Command. Now, they are actually wearing, when I looked it up, the Market Garden uniform. So, they are not the early Airborne uniforms that you would have seen uh, 
early when America was involved in the war. These would have been Market Garden or later. So you see what I'm going to start with. So we have we have a, a character here equipped with a BAR. And I will tell you right now, I really loved these miniatures. Now, if you see this patch here, this is obviously 101. And if you see this flag there, those are actually sculpted on. Now, you know, I had to paint on the image, but the, the outline is sculpted into the model. So all I really had to do with this one was decide if I wanted 101 or 82nd. And this one, I just, it's like a square. So I just kind of made an image of what would have been a flag because I noticed that's what all of the American Airborne had around the time of Market Garden. So that is your BAR. This guy is equipped with a weapon I do not recognize or have a name for. So if you know what he's holding with the grenade, let me know what weapon this guy is using because I'm very curious as to what this weapon is. But I really like that figure. This is a soldier advancing, obviously, with his M1 rifle. Uh, this is a soldier crouching with the Thompson. This, I think, is from the command. And I wasn't sure. You know, he's kind of leaning over, but I wasn't sure if he was an officer or just an aide. I don't know what this is he has right here. So if you know what this is, the guy with the arms folded, let me know what that is. I'm thinking maybe it's maybe it's some binoculars. I don't know. They don't look like binoculars. Doesn't look like a grenade launcher. I don't know what that is. I did not put any insignia on him because I did not really see where he had the outline for it. So again, I, you know, he almost looks like he could be an observer or something. So this is another one we have advanced, and he has the carbine right here. Uh, and he has his insignia. We have this one here. Now, I think that is a grease gun. I really like this guy. He is carrying a grease gun. This is, you know, your guy lying down, a la you could use him as a sniper. Doesn't really have a scope or anything. So I'm not sure if he was intended to be a sniper or if he just kind of he's the best shot in the best shot in the squad. So he has to be the sniper. This is I think one from the uh command pack and these are all metal in case you didn't see any of my previous uh reviews of these Gaddis Gaming uh infantry World War II infantry. But so this guy I like where he's kind of crouching down, he's on the radio. He has his pistol so this guy could be calling in an airstrike or a preparatory bombardment. We have another soldier firing and engaging what looks like to be his boat action, you know, M1. I think they're called M1s, the boat action ones, or let me know if I'm wrong. And this is another soldier advancing. Now, my favorite one, well, maybe not my favorite one, but one of my favorite ones is this guy here because he had the model on, uh, it's actually sergeant stripes, I think. Those are corporal, but I think the third one didn't show up when I tried to uh, paint over because the stripes are fairly thin. But I think there's actually supposed to be three stripes there. But either way, this is clearly your NCO. So if you're playing a game of boat action and the NCO gets taken out, you can literally take him out. And if you see here, you can almost see better that there's actually three stripes there. So he would be a sergeant. This side looks like a corporal, at least in my opinion. But I really like this guy. He's got the Thompson submachine gun and the pistol. And I do not know what this is on his leg. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's a canteen. Maybe it is a, it's not a Claymore. I don't think it's a, a part to a Claymore. If you know what that is, let me know. You know, a lot of people probably are much more familiar with the gear or the outfit, the kit of an American paratrooper during Market Garden. This is another one, you know, advancing with the Thompson. 
kind of reminds me of that lieutenant in uh the lieutenant in uh Band of Brothers. I forgot what his name was. But you could use him for that. And then the last one is kind of this leader here I got, you know, kind of looking over this map that I I just kind of jimmied into a map. I don't you know, it doesn't have any map images on it, but I just thought I'd put something on there like X is the spot. And these are all by Gaddis Gaming. And I'm like I said, I'm very impressed with these. Definitely hoping that they will they will see or get some action in, in some of my games. And that brings us back to the pickle jar. And this is actually I'd say probably about eight or nine Gaddis Gaming miniatures. These are my Germans with assault rifles that are being soaked in brake fluid in order to get the paint off. And to make a long story short, you know, I made several attempts on these guys. And at first, I really didn't like their color. I was trying to go for a real light gray. I didn't like it. I had put the, the primer on. I put the light gray paint on with a spray paint. And then I put some... Uh, Games Workshop Contrast Paint. I think I used the, uh, it's supposed to be for white, but the stuff is really gray. Okay. And I knew it was gray, which is why I thought it would work. But uh, it was this stuff here. So I put some of this contrast paint on them and that was, that, that just killed it. I mean, it just really messed them up. They didn't look white. They didn't look gray. They just looked ghostly. So I decided I was going to strip the paint off. I had a small bottle of brake fluid that I got at the dollar store that I was actually going to use on some Hot Wheel cars or similar uh, for one of my Spectre Op games. And this is about how much you get in the, the dollar version as well, in case you were wondering of brake fluid. So I actually did it. They stripped off very well, uh, but... I sprayed them again, so I gave them a primer, and then this time I was just going to do them in kind of a brown, tan, kind of desert colors that they would have had, the uh, the Deutsche Afrika Corps, whatever they were called, and unfortunately it was very humid out yesterday here, it was like 73% humidity, and the instructions said, and I didn't read them till afterward, that you're not supposed to use it if it's less if it's more than 60% humidity. And so it really bubbled them up. It really gooked them up. And so fortunately, I hadn't thrown out my brake fluid. And I will tell you guys that if you use this stuff, please do not pour it down your sink. I don't live in your city, but maybe I do. And I don't want to be drinking your brake, your brake fluid. So what I do is I take the miniatures out. I seal the jar, right? And I discard the whole jar at once. I don't, I don't pour this down the sink or anything like that where you're putting it into the municipal water system. I've actually seen people do that. Not gamers, fortunately, but I've seen people do that on some, you know, some videos where they're showing how to strip paint off of Hot Wheels and stuff, and they're sitting in their sink pouring this out and scrubbing the, the vehicles. Don't pour this down your sink, guys. Come on now. You know, and I'm not no enviro, environmental type of person, but, you know, I have common sense. So, but anyway, uh, I had to strip them again because the humidity, just all of the spray paint caked up on them. So usually if you put them in here overnight, it will come off. And I'm going to show you a real quick demonstration, which is why I, I put this in front of you, of how it works. Okay, so if you're going to do this at home and you, you want to strip your own miniatures, obviously, I would recommend you get a jar. This is an old pasta jar uh, because you want to make sure the miniatures are immersed simply spraying or coating them in brake fluid typically does not work from what I know now maybe you'll have different results if you try that but I'm just telling you what works for me so you need the jar obviously you need some brake fluid which I've used the uh, purple colored brake fluid so I don't really think the color matters this one is clear but I know it works you're going to need, obviously, some kind of paper or cardboard surface to absorb any of the brake fluid. You don't really want this 
on your work surface. You're going to need some kind of gloves. I just need that just for my hands. And, you know, some type of forceps or something that you can get to figure out. And finally, the most important thing is you're going to need an old toothbrush. Now, I happen to keep my old tooth toothbrushes when I'm done with them. But if not, what you can do is just take the one you're using now and then go buy yourself a new one because most people don't change their toothbrushes as often as they should. So, you know, it might be a good chance just take that toothbrush you got now, rinse it off, throw it in your hobby box, and then just go buy you another toothbrush at the dollar store. So having done that, and like I said, you want to let these sit overnight. I've got about nine in here, so I know you can at least get that many. So you're going to run in here, we're going to reach in here and grab one. And the funny thing is, the basing material actually did not come off the first time. Now, I don't know if it's going to come off this time or not. All right, and so this is why you need the glove. is because you're going to want to be able to hold it. And then you're going to run this toothbrush over here, right? And you can see the bare metal being exposed. And just to show you how gooky it was, look at that. That's literally how it looked. You can't see any detail on the weapon or anything. But we're going to just go over that. And the reason I say use a toothbrush and don't just try to rinse this off is that paint will get into the detail. And you might be able to rinse off a big clob of it, but if you want to get it out of your detail and get that stuff to show back up again, I just recommend a toothbrush. And really, guys, that's it. You see there? That looks nice. And a lot of the uh, the basin is still on there. So let's grab another one. You do got to be careful. These are metal, so I'm not sure about plastic. But And what I mean by not sure is I'm not sure if the, if the uh, stuff will affect the plastic uh, as far as breaking it down. But with the metal, you just got to be careful. You don't, you don't rub too hard or your weapons don't get bent or popped off. Because I imagine if you lose a piece in there, you definitely don't want to uh, be sticking around there with your fingers. And, of course, you got really don't have a lot of options with pouring this out and, and getting it later. Unless you're going to pour it on your sidewalk, which, again, I don't recommend. Right? You don't want it in your groundwater, a bunch of motor oil or brake fluid. So dispose it properly if you can. And here we go. Just... Just running this toothbrush over it, and there you see all that nice detail coming back in. The metal is getting its natural sheen again. And the base, these were glued down with crazy glue, and it did not, this brake fluid did not break up the crazy glue. Which, I've heard of people using simple green and things like that. Uh, I don't know if that works. I have not used it to take met, met, uh, paint off a miniature. I've tried to use it for vehicles. And it certainly didn't strip any paint off of those vehicles I put it on. Uh, but then again, I haven't used the brake fluid on the vehicles either. Uh, here's another one. You know, and you can see just how gooey that got with that humidity. And I usually do not get that. I mean, this was a, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the, uh, not, not, not Krylon. It was the other one that was the primer paint. Uh, I can't remember anything right now. I'm getting old. But uh, I, I normally use it a lot. And I, I've never had that happen with that primer paint. You know, even though it's not meant for hobbies. But, man, that humidity was high yesterday. So. Now, I do not rinse these off again. I know, I think I said, I told you guys, I saw a video where somebody was running water on them. Don't do that either, right? You don't need to rinse them off. All you will need to do is sit them out to dry. You know, if, if it's hot, that's even better. You know, they'll dry real quick, and then you can prime them again. Obviously, you don't want to try to prime them again right after you clean them because that brake fluid will mess up the paint trying to adhere. But once you clean them, you can sit them out to dry. Now, see this one. I'm going in the direction of the weapon because I don't want, I don't want that. Uh, I don't want the, the tip of the weapon to break off. 
Let me try to get these shoes and things. This toothbrush, though, they work great. I don't really know what else you could use. Right, and so right there, you see, I've got four of them. Beautiful and bright and, you know, back to normal. Because I'm not going to give up on these guys. <laughs> I am not going to give up. They are going to get an excellent paint scheme. And when you see them again, you will, you will be surprised and shocked that they are the same miniatures. But I mean, you can see the you can see the uh, weapons and stuff now. This one looks like it has a little flash or something. That spear is in good, pretty strong. Let's clip this off. I don't know what this is. I don't think it belongs on here. Yeah, some of that pink goes on there so thick, I couldn't even see the flash. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to show you guys that while I was doing it, in case any of you have never done that before and you were kind of scared to try it. I'm sure most of you have heard about doing it, but now, now you see, you know. Make sure you get some good thick. This is like a brown paper bag. Make sure you get something thick to protect your table. But other than that, guys, I will hopefully be getting up some other videos soon. I got a couple of things I'm thinking about or slash working on. Uh, I may even do some more of the Indie Game Week. I got a couple more I want to do. But uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of things. I'm actually painting again, as you can see. And so I want to kind of keep that up. And that's, you know, that's kind of my focus. I'm also really anxious to get rid of some stuff. I have, I, I, was, I sat down and made a long list the other night of new products I wanted to get this year. And uh, I'd like to get rid of stuff. So what I'm hoping is every time I bring in something, I can get rid of an equivalent. Meaning if I spend $30, you know, I sell something for $30. So I just need to take some time and go through my collection and see what I can get rid of. But uh, I hope this helps you guys. I, I hope you guys are doing well and your hobby is going good. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.